What's up everybody, Alvaro here from Alvaro Barrios Digital and today I want to talk to you about standard events. Now standard events, if you don't know what they are, they are just one method to record your conversions on Facebook and as you probably know if you watch this, recording conversions through your Facebook ads is very important. That way you can start optimizing your campaigns. Before the whole iOS thing that's happening right now and if you don't know what's going on with that, probably do actually, but in short, iOS is making changes that we're going to be losing some of the data from iOS. OS users. Prior to the iOS changes, I had always recommended for really 99% of all people out there to just use custom conversions in order to track conversions because they're easier to understand. Anyone can do them. It's just, they're just easier to grasp for most people. But now with the iOS changes, one of the things that's going to be happening that will be different moving forward is that we only get access to eight total conversion events for the entire account. And those are active conversion events. So for example, if at one point in time you have a conversion conversion events and then another point in time you have eight different ones you can still do that it's just more so eight active conversions at any given time but regardless that does limit what we can track and what we can do inside of our ad accounts and with custom conversions if you're running you know a bunch of different webinars and a bunch of different lead magnets or whatever it might be purchases as well you might easily exceed the limit of eight conversions per account just by using custom conversion obviously that's not something that you want to happen so the way to mitigate that is to start utilizing what are known as standard events. Now, if you don't know what a standard event is, it's the same thing as a custom conversion in the sense that it's something that's used to track conversions. It's just that the setup of it is a little different. So with a standard event, and I will link up for you below in the comments an article from Facebook that talks about all the available standard events, how to set them up, how you can benefit from them. But in short, what they are is that they're an additional snippet of code that you add to to your base pixel and then you put that snippet of code on the conversion page so for as a very simple example let's just say you're running a free lead magnet campaign right so people opt into the lead magnet they put in their email and they get redirected on that thank you page well on that thank you page you then want to add a small small snippet of code which is the lead standard event that way whenever someone lands on that thank you page that conversion gets activated it gets recorded in your account and then you know everything kind of moves forward from there that's really what it is and you'll see in the resource I'm going to provide, there are several standard events. There's more than eight. Technically, you know, they, it doesn't allow you to use every single standard event at the same time. But for most people, the most common standard events are things like lead, complete registration, initiate checkout, and purchase, right? There's a few other ones in there that may be a little bit more nuanced, like add to cart, add to wish list, stuff like that. But in general, those ones right there are the most common ones. Now, if you're using platforms such as, you know, Shopify or any type of checkout service, Service like Thrivecart, Samcart, they will actually automatically add these standard events for you, particularly the purchase standard event and the initiate checkout standard event. If you're using other platforms such as lead pages, Instapage, in certain instances, uh, ClickFunnels, you know, they may not automatically add these standard events for you. So you have to add them manually. So I know that can sound scary, but it's really not that difficult. So when you look at the, the resource page on standard events, you'll see all the standard events. They're just a small, small snippet of text. They all start with FBQ and then you know they go on with a little short snippet of text so if, if you're doing the lead standard event it's FBQ track if you're doing the complete registration standard event it's FBQ complete registration so on and so forth and all you have to do is take that small snippet right there and then paste it into your base pixel right underneath the page view event so it's actually very easy and straightforward I am not a technical person in any way shape or form I don't know any coding at all but I feel very comfortable creating standard events and and so that is one way to do it. Like I said, there are also platforms that automatically do it for you. And there also is the Facebook event setup tool, which doesn't require you to do any type of copying and pasting. And I will link that resource below as well. The only caveat with that tool is at least in my experience, it's very finicky in that sometimes it will work and other times it won't. So if you do go this route of wanting to use that tool, be sure to test it and don't just assume that Facebook did it correctly for you. Always, always, always test and make sure at the end of the day my preferred method is just doing the manual install something because i trust myself more than the tool which has been finicky at times like i said i do want to present that option and make it available for you so now that you know what standard events are and why you should start using them i do want to tell you an additional benefit of standard events over custom conversions so if you have been using custom conversions this whole time downside about custom conversions even though they were super easy to set up is that they didn't actually share data with one another meaning if you're running a custom conversion for 
for a lead magnet over here and then you're running a different custom conversion for a different lead magnet over here those two custom conversions don't share data with one another whereas all of the standard events they do share data with one another so if you're running five different lead magnets and they're all using the lead standard event they're all going to share that data so that each and every single campaign can optimize itself better and better if you're using the purchase standard event and you're getting all different purchases for different products they're all going to share that data and again it'll make it easier for you to optimize your campaigns so that is the benefit it always has been the benefit actually of standard events over custom conversions so that is something that you do have to look forward to and again with these changes coming with ios 14 using the standard events will make it easy to stay within your limit of eight conversions because again you can have 20 different lead magnets if they're all using the lead standard events you can run those 20 different lead magnets with no problem at all you would not be able to do it though if they're all using custom conversions and so again you can have unlimited campaigns using the lead standard event the complete registrations event the purchase event the checkout event as long as all those standard events add up to eight or less you can run as many campaigns as you like which you cannot do with custom conversions moving forward and the other benefit of the standard events again with this ios change is that we do have quote unquote prioritizer events inside of aggregate event measurement and once ios 14 is fully implemented anytime we go in there and make a change let's say you want to add a custom conversion it's going to take 72 hours for your changes to take place but if you start using custom conversions you're not really going to have a need to modify that too many times right you just set them once and they're set it and forget it for the most part uh and so you won't have that issue of having to go in there and change them and having to wait 72 hours for your aggregate event measurement to start working again that will link also what this whole aggregate event measurement thing is if you're not familiar with that just yet but hopefully it'll make sense once you check out that resource as well so all in all if you have not been using standard events definitely start getting used to them i know they can be a little bit intimidating at first especially if all you've been doing is custom conversions but i can promise you if you can copy and paste you can create standard events that's really all it takes and like i said there also are certain tools there that just make it easier for you to go out there now there are some instances very very small instances where you still might want to use custom conversions moving forward and at the risk of potentially confusing people i will still give this piece of advice out if you are not running any purchase funnels though this does not apply to you so you can completely ignore everything i'm about to say but if you are running purchase funnels if you happen to have a purchase funnel where there's an immediate upsell so let's say you're running an ad to a ten dollar product they buy that product and then they get upsold to a you know a hundred dollar product or two hundred dollar product right immediately on the page after there is a case to be made that for the initial purchase you want a custom conversion and then for the higher product price you want the standard event simply because when the price difference is so high like that you can only record one action from an ios user and you may want to record the higher purchase action for that you know when it comes to standard events if you're just choosing the purchase standard event it'll record the first purchase right there the ten dollar one not the two hundred dollar one and so if you want to be recording the two hundred dollar one inside of your aggregate event measurement maybe create a custom conversion for the ten dollar product and use the standard events of purchase for the two hundred dollar product i know that may have been super confusing for those of you who are not running purchase funnels like that so like i said you can literally just ignore everything i just said if you are not running a funnel like that i did just want to quickly include that for the people that may be running a purchase funnel just like that so if you found this information helpful head on over to alvarebarros.com forward slash fe help in there you're gonna fill out a quick form and that way i can get to know a little bit more about yourself then afterwards you and i will hop on a zoom call and we'll figure out what the best solution is for you i do not have a cookie cutter solution for everyone depending on your business your goals your current revenue your revenue objectives i have different solutions for everyone so once you fill that out form we'll hop on a call and we'll see how you and i can start working together in the future hey thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far do me a huge favor and hit that like button it really helps push this video out to the youtube algorithm that way more people just like you can watch this information and benefit from it just like you have and if you have any other topics you'd like for me to cover definitely just let me know in the comments below the most popular and requested topics i get i turn into videos just like this one and if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications that way you don't miss any valuable content that i put out on a weekly basis thank you so much for your support i really appreciate it